Welcome, everybody. Hope you had a good weekend, a good Father's Day to those who celebrated. Uh, we have a major change to the top 2024 election forecast. It's the 538 election forecast, and we're, we're going to look at it in a moment. And while the change we have is major, we also are very quickly going to learn that you and I are not going to be doing this every single day from now until November, because the changes, while monumental, also are of very limited predictive value. So the news is that after last week, 538 launched their first 2024 presidential projection forecast for this election, and it had Joe Biden winning by something like a 52 to 48, you know, out of 100 simulations, Biden wins 52. We now have a reversal in which as of last night, it was Trump 51, Biden 49, and it is now Trump 50, Biden 49. Now, before we go further, you might say, hold on, that doesn't add up to 100. Does that mean that there might be some third party winner? Does a third party candidate have a shot at getting to 270 electoral votes? And the answer is, of course, no, there is a roughly one in 100 chance. It's actually they, they say it's less than one in 100 that nobody gets to 270. There are a couple of scenarios you can look at uh, that are 269 to 269. It's not very likely all four of those scenarios together represent less than one percent of the totality of, of possible outcomes. So what are the takeaways here? The main takeaway, the primary takeaway is, David, we're going to pat you on the back, buddy, and give you an attaboy. You've been saying I'm now I'm now doing third person. I've been saying for months this is going to be very close. No matter what you think about uh, uh, Latino voters in Florida, no matter what you think about anti Biden Democrats in Michigan, where, as we know, there were famously massive dumps in 2020, um, no matter what you think about any particular indicator, factor, poll or, or hypothesis, this will almost certainly be an election decided by I'll let you fill in the blank. I know you all know it, an election decided by fewer than 500,000 votes in somewhere between three and five states. Now, we're going to look at some of this projection a little bit more. But the most important takeaway here, if you care about the future of the country and there are people who don't, um, is that we have to get out there and we have to vote. Now, as we go down and look at some of the other details, and, and again, we're not going to do this daily because my expectation, I would be shocked if we get in this projection, unless something unprecedented happened, if Trump does a soil and run during next week's presidential debate, we may see, we may see these numbers change dramatically. If uh, one of the Joe Biden wanders off videos is genuinely a video of Biden wandering off rather than right wing disinformation, which we will talk about. Maybe you would see this get further off than something like 5248. But I don't think we're going to see this get to 6040 unless there is some kind of historic implosion by Trump or Biden. Trump leaves the country on his jet to avoid prison. Right. I mean, something really crazy. I believe that we are going to be in this range, probably no wider than a 55 to 45 prediction on 538's forecast for the next several months. Now, you look down at this and you can find all sorts of different interesting things. You see that just a few days ago, uh, the, the blue line was above the red line, meaning Biden was expected to win. Now it's Trump, but it's all very, very, very tight. For me, the most interesting aspect of this are what are the states most likely to be potential tipping point states? And it's actually a bigger list than we had last week. So if you want to say to me, OK, David, little tiny changes to the predictions. But what is really substantively changing? There is something interesting here, which is that North Carolina and Florida and Texas have been added as potential tipping point states. The concept of a tipping point state is that it is a state likely to determine who gets to 270 by itself. Now, I know that you're going to look at this and you're going to say, David, sir, if you're that respectful, that is of me, you'll say, David, sir, I don't really know how Texas could be a tipping point state. Let me explain it. Because we have some of these states that are super, super close, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, states that went to Biden last time. 
there are scenarios where Biden could lose some of those historically purple states and Texas, because it's closer than some red states and so many electoral votes, you can have a scenario where Trump takes some of those smaller purple states from Biden. And then if Biden can get Texas, he wins. Now, I know that many of you who have been following American politics for a while will say, David, that's a nice little scenario you've drawn up. But we know that while the 50 states are independent elections, statistically, they are not completely independent in the sense that if Trump gets Arizona, Wisconsin and Michigan, the whole election is probably going toward him and he would almost certainly also get Texas. And to that analysis, I would say congratulations. You're absolutely right. But this is a mathematical analysis. And now the states that are the likeliest single states, if it comes to one state to decide this election are Arizona, Texas, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. Does this mean your vote doesn't matter if you live in Utah or California? Unfortunately, in a sense, that's exactly what it matters. Now, if everybody stays home, all of a sudden the votes matter way more. But the margin in Utah for Trump and the margin in California for Biden is expected to be so significant that the odds of those being decider states extremely, extremely low. So that's where we are right now. I'm not going to update this daily. I expect that it is going to sort of swing one point, two points plus minus as things go. The big thing would be if something unprecedented happens. But if that happens let, to give my example, if Trump does a soil and run during the debate and it's global headlines, it's going to be so obvious that that is an election changing event that we're not going to need to look at the 538 forecast to tell us that, although certainly it will reflect it. So that's that. Let's now talk about the viral Biden wanders off disinformation element that went completely crazy over the weekend before it was debunked by some simple video. 